Hi everybody, it's Agnes. I've got a viewer's email with some questions. So this is from Sarah. Oh, thank you again for being here for us and helping us get whatever we want from life. You helped me before manifesting my ex and you told my story in a video of yours. I have one small question though. I'm still confused about manifesting a new person. I started going to the gym four months ago and I had a personal coach. We can say I had a crush on him but nothing more. I wasn't thinking about telling him. So he was so professional, <clears throat> I was sure he wasn't attracted to me at all. One day he asked me out. After two dates he said he liked me and he wanted us to try to be together. He was so committed to the whole thing and it, he was a pure gentleman. It has been a month now. He talks to me less than before. He doesn't show an interest anymore and he doesn't tell me he wants to see me or misses me. So my question to you, Sarah, is what did you do prior to this occurring? Because he is you pushed out, you see. So what I want to point out is you started noticing this. He's, um, what did you say here? He talks to me less, he doesn't show any interest anymore and he doesn't tell me he wants to see me or miss me. See, all that is about what he's giving you and in this instance, what he's not giving you, okay? So, remember when we're dealing with another person, there's two people. So, what are you giving him? What are you energetically giving? Are you just in what is he not giving me mode? Because if you are, that's a neediness and that's coming from longing and that's coming from a lack of self-love, you see. So that's the first point. The problem is I already started to have feelings for him and it makes me angry because we were such a good match. Okay. Now, when you say, this is a red flag for me, that makes me angry because we're such a good match. But I guess all he wants is physical intimacy. So there's quite a bit going on here. You started to have feelings for him that's totally fine and that makes me angry because we're such a good match. So the fact that he's not giving you attention is making you angry. Now I want to point something out. He's not your source of love, Sarah. He's got his own thoughts, feelings and beliefs about the things that he needs to do and he's got to maintain his own feel good about himself and he's got to move through his day. So he's not there as your oxygen tank of love, okay? And when you say that it makes you angry, it's almost like you think I'm entitled to get this because I used to get it and I should be getting it still. That's not going to work, okay? It's not going to work because you're coming from a place of taking. You're coming from a place of getting and then you're not getting and you're getting angry. So what that says to me is your self-love's not in a good, good place right now and I would highly suggest that you work on your self-love a lot because if someone gave you attention and then they've stopped it's still up to you to maintain whether they're giving it or not giving it because it's like you weren't giving it to yourself he was giving it so you were feeding off that and living off that which was great but then when it stopped it was like someone cut the puppet strings and you completely collapsed because you didn't have enough self-love on board to sustain yourself. So this is a red flag, work on your self-love, okay? People don't have to love us because if you think they do and you get angry, it's a very heavy burden that you put on someone, you have to love me for me to feel good and it's not fair, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, I guess all he wanted is physical intimacy. Now, you've made an assumption there, you've interpreted it, and it could be totally false. It could be that your neediness pushed him away and he felt it and he didn't want that job of I need to love her or I need to give her attention for her to feel good. Maybe he just didn't want that job. You've made the assumption that all he wanted is physical intimacy, but that's the contents of your consciousness, okay? 
I'll put a video down below called The Contents of Your Consciousness and I'll also put down below some YouTubes I did called on interpretation. How we interpret things isn't necessarily correct. It is one interpretation and Shelley Lefko was really good at explaining that. She's the one that did the beliefs work so I'll put the interview she did down below. And also Morty Lefko, her husband, did a YouTube on Stop Your Suffering because you assign certain meaning to things. I'll put that down below for you to check out as well. So you're saying, what can I do to attract him again? Well, it's not what can I do to attract him again. It's why am I needy and trying to suck love out of this person? Okay. And you said, or to make him have the same feelings for me. This is about, you got to look at within yourself, you're trying to get. You cannot have a good relationship if you're coming from get mode, okay? Because it's coming from a selfish place. I need you to do this for me. I need you to love me. I need you to, you know, you actually said it in this way, um, make him have some feelings for me. You can't make someone. You can make yourself feel self-love by practicing affirmations, self-love meditations, etc. But that's what attracts someone back. The fact that you're free and easy and self-loving and secure. What I'm hearing here, Sarah, is um, that you're not secure and you want to make him have same feelings for you. But really the work isn't trying to get him to have feelings for you. It's for you to get solid in your self-love and for, for you to feel secure. Because right now when you're in this state, you're emotionally unattractive to people. E.g. the specific person. Okay. So you said also. What, so you said or make him have the same feelings for me while I know he doesn't care. Well, it's probably not that he doesn't care. It's the fact that he feels your neediness and he's trying to run away. Okay. So I can just the vibe of you is very much needy, getting and take mode, Sarah. You've got to deal with that. Okay. You know, you're not the first one and you won't be the last, but that's what I can feel from your email. Okay. So, and then you said, I'm having difficulties to remove the neediness. Yes, so at least you've said that, work on it. Ho'oponopono prayer, dissolve the part of you that created this, self-love affirmations, um, self-love meditations, look at your mental diet during the day, okay? So also, I know I'm worthy of his, his love. Well, that's good. That's a good self-esteem thought. And that he's making a mistake anyway. No, no, no. You can't say what other people are doing or not doing because that's you putting yourself on a pedestal and saying he should be loving me. People are independent, okay? You can't say someone's making a mistake. He's making the right choice for him right now under the circumstances, okay? It's not just about you and what you want. There are two people in this, okay? So... But I can get very angry when after all these meditations, it's not coming close. Well, that's coming from a place of I'm entitled, I'm entitled and I should be getting and the world doesn't work that way. The law of attraction doesn't work that way. If you're getting angry, it's this I should be getting love and I deserve it and I should, I should be having it. Yes, but from you, Sarah. Other people aren't there just to fill you up with love, okay? It's not, we can't demand that of another by getting angry and I should have got this by now. The law of attraction responds to where you're at, not where you say you are, you're at or how much self-love you've done and how many affirmations you've done. The law of attraction in the universe doesn't give a rat's ass. It goes and reads you. It doesn't care what you say. It reads your energy. It reads your vibe. Okay. So where are we here? Now you said, I mean, why are we meditating and trying hard to control our feelings? Well, that's not quite what it's about. You meditate to let go, you meditate to allow, you meditate to experience peace and calm 
and not be trying to get stuff from other people. Stuff meaning love, approval, reassurance, um, attention, time, because that, it just is a repellent. That's the stuff that pushes people away, okay? So you're saying trying hard to control our feelings if the destiny is decided in the whole process anyway. Well, if you believe in destiny, then you probably don't need to be doing any law of attraction stuff because no matter what you do when you believe in destiny, it's predetermined according to you and according to those that believe in destiny. So personally, I don't believe in destiny. I believe in conscious creation and you create from a place of doing what you can to look after yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, okay? And you contain yourself and you don't put that on to other people. And you do that more and more and more and more and you become self-sufficient and you become someone who generates self-love, self-worth, confidence, security from within, okay? So if we do the meditations or not, does this change the destiny of what will happen or what will happen will happen anyway? Well, as said, I don't believe in destiny and any work you do, when you are a conscious creator and you believe that what you project out and what you create within yourself with your emotions and balancing your mind and what you give your focus and attention to, that's what brings itself around you, you see. So, yeah, I'm not a believer in destiny, Sarah. I'm just not. I just think if you believe in it, you know, you're like a turtle on its back because it's like your efforts are wasted because no matter what I do, that's going to happen to me anyway because it was predestined. So if you want to believe in it, it's totally up to you. If it's working for you, go for it. But personally, mm -mm, not for me. Too much about putting your power outside of yourself and whatever I do doesn't have an effect and that's I mean I don't believe that having studied Neville and etc etc for a long time it's just not what I believe so anyway so I hope that's answered some of your questions but yeah I think Sarah really be careful of the anger getting angry because you're not getting what you want or getting angry because you think you know the thoughts you have are you know, we were really good together and this should be this way and we should be and we, you know, there's two people and you've got to allow someone to be where they're at but they are also a responder, a responder of what you've got going on. So if someone's moving away from you, you've got to ask yourself, what am I thinking, feeling and believing that this is the way that it is? What am I doing? It's not getting angry about what he's doing or what he's not doing or what he's not doing for you, okay? So you can change this, but you've really got to change your thinking about that he owes you the love, okay? Because that's what it feels like from that part of your email. It's like, well, I'm going to get angry because he gave it to me before. Why doesn't he give it to me now? He owes me. He, he owes us to give this a chance, you know, and... You, that's a form of trying to control and manipulate and demand something from someone through your energy and that's not a good zone to go into, okay? All right, lots of love and I hope that helps.